Want to keep your homemade bread fresher longer? Well, today we're going to be making an easy sandwich bread using a technique called Tang Zong. And trust me, when you try this, you'll never go back to store-bought again. It's lunch with Lisa. Hi, I'm Lisa and I show you how to make quick and easy healthy recipes and today we're gonna make your house smell like a bakery. We're gonna be following this recipe I found on the King Arthur's website for easy sandwich bread and I noticed down in the notes and it mentioned this Tang Zong technique. So of course I had to try it out because I had made an easy sandwich loaf a couple times previously in the last week or so. And by the time I was using it to eat a sandwich at lunch, the whole thing was crumbling apart and I had to eat my sandwich in pieces versus as a sandwich. So after making bread and using this technique, my bread stayed fresh all week long and soft and I could use it in a sandwich until the very last piece. I was really shocked about how easy this whole process is. For this recipe, you're gonna need three cups or 360 grams of all-purpose flour. You'll wanna use bread flour here, so if you're going to use all-purpose flour, use the King Arthur's that has high protein content. Otherwise, use bread flour. A half a cup or 113 grams of milk. You can use any milk here, skim, 1%, 2%, or whole, it's your choice. Two thirds of a cup or 152 grams of water, four tablespoons or 57 grams of melted butter, or you can just use a fourth of a cup or 50 grams of vegetable oil. Two tablespoons or 25 grams of granulated sugar, one and a quarter teaspoons or eight grams of table salt, and one packet of active dry yeast. You can dissolve this in one tablespoon warm water or two teaspoons of instant yeast. So for the Tang Zong method, Tang Zong is just a simple mixture of flour and water. And you basically heat it up and create a roux before you're baking your bread. So you're just preheating a little bit of the flour. And what it does is it allows the starch to already burst and spread throughout your bread. And it's just gonna help your bread not go stale so fast. Begin by measuring out all the ingredients. Just have everything in place. In your saucepan, you're gonna pour in half a cup of your water and three tablespoons from your flour and mix them together until the flour dissolves in the water. Then stick your pan over medium high heat and you're gonna whisk this constantly until it thickens and it's gonna form a thick slurry. This is gonna take a very short amount of time, maybe about one to two minutes. Then you're gonna transfer this to a bowl and let it cool till it's lukewarm. Then you'll be combining this with the rest of your ingredients. Now you don't have to use this right away. You could make this a day ahead. You just need to wrap it really well and store it at room temperature for the next day. Once it's cooled down, you can combine it with all the rest of your ingredients. In a large bowl, combine all the rest of your ingredients together and you're going to put your Tang Zong in there. Mix and knead everything together by hand, or you can use a mixer or a bread machine. I went ahead and used my standing mixer because it makes everything so much easier. And it should only take about five to seven minutes in your stand mixer at medium low speed with the dough hook. It'll probably stick to the bottom of the bowl, but it shouldn't really cling to the sides of the bowl. In a bread machine or by hand, you're gonna knead this for about six to eight minutes until it forms a smooth ball. Then you wanna transfer your dough to a lightly greased bowl Cover your bowl and allow it to rise in a warm spot until it's puffy, though it doesn't necessarily have to double. Do this for about one to two hours, depending on the warmth of your kitchen. I stuck mine in my oven with the light on, and that was perfect. If you're using a bread machine, allow the bread machine to complete its cycle, then leave the dough in the machine until it's doubled in bulk. If you wanna do it by hand or by a bread machine, there's a link to this recipe below, so you can go click on it and read the instructions from King Arthur's website. You're going to deflate your dough by punching it down and then transfer it to a lightly oiled work surface. Then you're gonna shape the dough into an eight inch log. I like to do this by rolling it out into a big rectangle, about the same width as my pan, and then rolling it into a log. You're gonna grease your loaf pan with some butter and then place your bread log down in it. Loosely cover this with either some greased plastic wrap or a damp cloth and allow your bread to rise for about an hour more in a warm spot. You want it to be domed about one inch above the edge of the pan. It's okay if it's a little bit more. About halfway through or towards the end of your second rise, you wanna preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure your bread is not in there with the light on. <laughs> then you wanna bake your bread for 30 to 35 minutes. I like to pull mine out and check the bottom to see if it's brown on the bottom. And then if it needs to be browned a little bit more, I stick it back in 
It takes me about 40 minutes, 45 sometimes, to get my bread fully done. You can also check the internal temperature to make sure it's at 190 degrees. If you thump the bread and it sounds hollow, it's done. If it measures 190 degrees Fahrenheit in the middle of the bread, it's done. So go ahead and remove your bread from the oven and let it cool on a cooling rack. Wait until your bread is room temperature so it doesn't get gummy when you're slicing it. You can store your bread in a plastic bag at room temperature and it should last for about a week on your countertop. But of course, if you're not gonna use it within the week, go ahead and freeze it for longer term storage. I also take about a couple weeks to get through my bread, so I stick mine in the refrigerator and then pop it in my toaster whenever I wanna heat it back up. Still super good, I just don't toast it very dark. Now, if you want the perfect slices, definitely recommend getting some kind of bread slicer. There's a ton of them on Amazon, so I went ahead and chose this one because it was made out of wood. And it comes with these little adjustable inserts. So you can put them wherever you need. And then it has thin slices and thick slices, and then it has a little divider. So I made thin slices out of mine. I just stick the divider in, put the bread up against that, and use my bread knife to slice all the way down. Perfect slices every time. And if you use a serrated knife, it will leave grooves, but that's why you have this. So you can mess up this board and your, all your other cutting boards can stay beautiful. I'll leave a link to this down below. This technique gives you the perfect texture for your bread and it lasts so long. So definitely give this a try and let me know what you think. Get good at making this loaf because coming up soon, we're gonna use this in a 1970s popular party dish. You'll wanna take this to your next party, I promise. It's so cool. And if you like this recipe, I'm sure you're gonna love this one too. So go check it out and I'll see you in my next video. It's lunch with Lisa.